In the last lecture, we learned what is an observable and what do we use it for. We learned that we use observables to handle asynchronous data. Especially, we use it for handling a stream of asynchronous data. Now, in this lecture, let's learn how to create and use an observable. As we learned in the previous lecture, observable is not native to Angular or JavaScript. It is provided by a third-party library called as RxJS. So, the RxJS it stands for Reactive Extensions Library for JavaScript. So the RxJS is a JavaScript library that allows us to work with asynchronous data streams. It provides us with some methods and operators which we can use on an observable in order to manipulate the data. Now we also learned that RxJS uses observer design pattern behind the scenes. And we learned that in observer design pattern, or we can say in RxJS, we have two main players, the observable and the observer. So the observable is the one which is going to emit some data. And the observer is going to use that data. Now, in order to use the data emitted by the observable, the observer has to subscribe to that observable. If the observer is not subscribed to that observable, the observer cannot be notified about the data has been emitted and it cannot use the data which the observable has emitted. So these are the two main players in RxJS, the observable and the observer. Observable emits some data and observer, it subscribes to that observable and whenever the observable emits the data, the observer gets notified. And then the observer, or you can also call it a subscriber, it receives the data which the observable has emitted and the observer can do something with that data using handler. Now in this case, the handler is optional. So if we are not defining any handler, in that case, when the observable will emit the data, the observer will be notified, but it will not do anything with that data. Only when we specify a handler, then only the observer can do something with the data which it has received. Let's understand this practically. So here I have created a new project called Angular Observables. In this project, if I expand this source folder and if I expand this app folder, there we have one component, one root component called app component. And if I go to the app component class, there we have two properties, title and data. This data, it is an array and currently this array is empty. Now, if I go to app component.html, there also we have very simple HTML here. What we are doing is, first we are displaying an S2 element and then we are looping over the data array and we are displaying each element of that data array within this div. All right, and then we also have this button, get data. So if you go to the web page, the application currently looks something like this. Okay, now let's go back and let's learn about observables. So let's go to app component.ts file and there, first, we are going to create an observable. And to create an observable, we need to call the constructor of observable. And in order to use this observable, we also need to import it from RxJS library. Now, this RxJS library, it gets installed when we create an Angular project using Angular CLI. So if I go to package.json file, here you will notice that the RxJS library it is already installed when we created this Angular project using Angular CLI. And that's why I'm able to use it here. Okay, so here we are going to call the constructor of this observable. And in this way, we can create a new observable. Let's go ahead and let's assign the object returned by this observable, this observable constructor to a property. Here, let me go ahead and let me call this property maybe my observable. You can name it anything. Okay. So here we are creating an observable. Now currently this observable is not emitting any data. In order to make this observable emit some data to this observable constructor, we need to pass a callback function like this. And this callback function, it is going to receive an argument. Let's call that argument observer. You can name it anything. And this observer, it will be injected by RxJS library to this callback function. And this observer is nothing but the subscriber. So the subscribers, which is going to subscribe to this observable, 
we are going to receive those subscribers to this observer parameter. Now, on this observer parameter, if we want to emit some value, we need to call next method. This is very important. If we want to emit some value, we need to call next method on the observer. And as I mentioned, this observer here, it is going to receive all the subscribers who is subscribed to this observable. Now, using this next method, we want to emit some data. Let's say we want to emit an array. And in that array, we have some values, something like this. Okay. So this observable here, it is going to emit this data. Now, one very important point to note here is that an observer will emit a data only if there is any subscriber. Currently, for this observable, we don't have any subscriber. So this observable will not emit this data. Only when we have a subscriber for this observable, then only this observable is going to emit this data. So let's go ahead and let's create a subscriber for this observable. So what I want is in the web page, we have this get data button. So when this get data button is clicked, we want to subscribe to this observable and whatever value we will receive, we want to insert it inside this data array. Let's see how we can do that. So for that, let's first go to appcomponent.html. There we have this button element. On that, let's find click event. And to this click event, let's assign a method. Let's call it maybe get a sync data. Okay, and let's go ahead and let's create this method. Have a component class. So let me create it here. And inside this method, the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to subscribe to this observable. And to subscribe to this observable, first let's access that property. So let's say this dot my observable. And in order to subscribe to that observable, we can use subscribe method. Okay. All right. So here, this code which we have written, it is the observable. And this code which we have written here, it is the observer. So whenever a new data will be emitted from this observable, this code will be notified about that because we have subscribed to that observable. But currently, we are not doing anything with the data which this observable is going to emit. For that, what we need to do is we need to specify a handler function. Now, in the last lecture, we learned that in observer pattern, we have an event emitter we have an event listener and then we have an event handler. So in this example, this observable is the event emitter. It is going to emit some event. In this case, it is going to emit this next event. And this code here is the event listener. So since we have subscribed to that observable, every time this next event or any other event, this observable will emit, this code will be notified about that. And in order to handle that event, we also need an event handler. Now, in this case, when we are calling this next method, it is going to emit next event. And in order to handle that next event, to this subscribe method, we need to pass a callback function. So basically, this subscribe method takes three callback functions. Next, error, and complete. And all these three callback functions are optional. Now, the first callback function is the next function. And this callback function gets executed whenever the observable emits next event. In the same way, the second callback function is the error callback function. And this callback function gets called whenever the observable emits the error event. And the third callback function is the complete callback function. And this callback function gets called whenever the observable emits the complete event. Okay, so currently this observable is not emitting any error event or complete event. It is only emitting next event. So here we need to specify a callback function. So the first callback function, it is going to handle the next event. Okay, and this callback function is also going to receive the value which the next event has emitted. So let's call it maybe well. So this well here, it is going to receive this array. Now, what do we want to do with that array, with that data? Let's say we want to assign that array to this data property. So here I'll simply say this dot data 
equals well okay so this well here it is going to store an array and we are assigning that array to this data property and here we have this error because for this data property we have specified the type as any let's do the same thing here so here let's specify the type as any okay let's save the changes let's go to the web page so initially you will not see any data now when i click on this get data button you see you will see those five values displayed here so what has happened here is when i clicked on this get data button we subscribe to that observable and we are handling the data which that observable is emitting in this case we are going to receive the data which the observable is emitting inside this value parameter and we are assigning that value to this data property so now this data property will be assigned with this array okay and in the html we are looping over that array that data array and we are displaying each element of that array so that's what you will see here all right now let's go back and let's modify this observable a little bit so currently this observable it is only returning a single data it is returning an array but as we learned in the last lecture an observable can also stream a data so instead of returning all the data at once inside an array what we want is we want to stream this data so what i'm going to do is i'm going to emit one and then let me copy this line after this one is emitted i also want to emit two then i want to emit three let's also emit four and let's also emit five all right so now we are streaming the data because now we have multiple next method calls so each time the next method will be called it will emit a data and every time the data will be emitted by the observable we are going to receive that data inside this value property so when the first value will be emitted we will receive it inside this value parameter now what we want is now this value is no more an array right it is a primitive value so we want to push that value into this data array so here also let's change the logic a little bit here i will push that data that value in this data array okay so when the first value will be emitted this one will be assigned to this value parameter and we are going to push it to this data array then when the second value will be emitted again we are going to receive that value in this value parameter and we are pushing that value in the data array then again when the third value will be emitted again it will be assigned to this value parameter and we are pushing that value in the data array and so on so with this again let's save the changes let's go back to the web page and when i click on this get data again you can see we have all the values now in this case even though it looks like we received all the value at once but that is not the case here the data has been streamed one after the other but the streaming was so fast that it looked like we have received all the data at once so what i will do is here i'll use this set timeout function okay and to this set timeout function we will pass a callback function and then in that callback function we are going to call this next method let's also specify a time interval of 1000 milliseconds okay so now what will happen is this data will be emitted after one second let's do the same thing for other values as well so let me copy this line and let me paste it four more times and here let's change the value to two three four and five and let's also change the time interval to two second three second four second and five second all right let's save the changes now let's go back to the web page and now when i click on this get data button you see the data we are receiving after one second let me refresh the page again again when i click on this get data button the first data will come in one second the second data after two seconds third data after three seconds fourth data after four seconds and fifth data after five seconds so as you can see the data is being streamed here we are not receiving all the data at once all right so the observable which we have created here it is the observable 
this code here it is the observer it is the subscriber and this callback function which we are passing it is the handler i hope this concept is clear so in this lecture we learned how to create an observable how to emit data from that observable and how to subscribe to that observable and handle the data which that observable is emitting now when working with asynchronous data there might be some error which can occur so in the next lecture let's see how we can emit an error from an observable and how to handle that error and we will also talk about the completion of data stream from the observable